hi guys welcome back to the channel in today's video i'll be showing you how to make this beautiful underboss corset for yourself if this is something you are interested in please keep on watching and let's get into the video welcome back guys so as you can see i have placed my pattern paper and i'll just go ahead and roll a line at the top of the paper and that will serve as our starting point so we will be taking all our measurements from this line so the first measurement i'll be taking is my bust point which is 10 inches and from there i'll mark my under bust 13 and the length of this um top is 17 inches <coughs> including sewing allowance for the length so i'll repeat the same thing here as well and this is what we have so just go ahead and connect your dots together and this is what we have so the next thing i'll do is i'll just go ahead and create a neckline so i just took three inches and i'll also place my shoulder measurement seven inches and i'll come down by one inch and i'll connect that to my neck width though we do not need the top part of this um, pattern drafting i only drafted it for better understanding so just connect your neckline like so and yeah so after that now the next thing we'll do is to <clears throat> input our armhole seven inches in my own case and i'll go ahead and connect the line after connecting the line i'll just connect this one like as well and this is our chest line and I'll go ahead and just draft out a random armhole because we won't be needing that. So after doing this, before um, placing my nipple to nipple measurement, I'll go ahead and label it. So before placing that, I'll just go ahead and label this for this our shoulder, this our chest line, this our bust point line, this our under bust line, and this our waistline. So after doing that, we'll go ahead and impute our nipple to nipple measurements. In my own case, it is three and a half inches. So you put it on your bust point, your under bust, and on your waistline. After doing that, go ahead and connect it, connect the dots together. Then on your bust line, you come down by one inches, and then. You go to your waist and you take half inches on both sides. Like this. And then you go ahead and connect this with your ruler. And this is what it looks like. So the next thing we'll be doing now is to measure what we have on our bust point and our under bust. So go ahead and measure what you have there. So in my own case, as you can see, I have 3 inches. So yours might be more than 3 inches. So just measure what you have there and whatever thing you have, you just go ahead and place it here. So I'll measure 3 inches on this side. So you can see my 3 inches on, that, in, on the dotted line there. And I'll come to this other side and also measure 3 inches as well. After doing that, I'll go ahead and connect it to my underbust. So you connect it to your underbust line. So I'm using my curve roll, but if you do not have a curve roll, you can do this with your free hand. So that's one side. And this is the other side. So this is what we have. After that, now we'll go ahead and place our body measurement. So I'll place my bust measurement divided by four. I'll place it here. And I'll add one inch stitch for stitching allowance, one inch. So I'll come to my waist, place my waist circumference measurement, replace this dart that I took here, one inches. I'll replace it, and then I'll add one inches for stitching allowance. After that, I'll connect it with my ruler. And this is what it looks like. So this is what we have after drafting. So we'll go ahead and cut this out. So we do not need the top part. So you can see this is just the part we need. And please watch how I cut this 
so you won't make mistakes when cutting yours so please consider subscribing if you haven't done that don't forget to share comment leave a suggestion so this is what we have this is the part we'll be working with so we'll go ahead and draft out the back pattern so for the back pattern you can see that i have um zipper allowance here so but i'll not be making use of a zipper though but this will just serve as a guideline and for those that want to use zip for theirs so you can see what i have so what i'll do now is to place that part make sure it is on the line of that your zipper as you can see and i'll measure that one inches that one inches that we took so i'll measure it and i'll just take off this pattern paper and rule a straight line there so this straight line will just um make it easier for me just for me to have a straight line and then i'll place it back like this on that one inches mark like so just make sure you place it well and then i'll just go ahead and hold this down so it won't be moving when i'm trying to draft so after doing that now i'll just go ahead and trace the side so i'll just trace the side of this back piece like this trace this side and i'll trace the top part a bit of the on the top part i'll just trace out a bit like so trace out this other side and then i'll go ahead and um to make a dot on the dart as well then remove your front piece so now we'll go ahead and just draft out the back so for the back i just want the neckline to be curvy so i'll just go ahead and from this side here you can see how i slanted my ruler so that's just the difference and then for the dart i'll just go ahead and create my dart and that's all for the back piece so you can see how easy it is so after doing that go ahead and cut it out so guys um if you haven't subscribed so far please consider subscribing turn on the notification bell so this is what we have for the back piece so i'll not be making use of this zipper part because i'll be making use of a loop so i only need this part i just went ahead to because i so i just went ahead to make those dots there it's not necessary so i'll not be making use of these parts because i'll be making use of a loop so i only need this other part for the back so let's go ahead and cut it so cutting this out on this fabric this is the fabric i'll be working with you'll be adding half inches stitching allowance on your pattern on your fabric sorry so you can see what i have and you can see how i am adding half inches stitching allowance please guys measure this do not cut it like this especially if a beginner just measure half inches so i went ahead to add half inches but i did not add this half inches um on the length of the um of the dress because i already did that so this is what we have you can see my stitching allowance and i cut out this center piece on fold why this other side they are not on fold i hope you understand so we'll go ahead now and start um sewing so i'm just marking the rough side of the fabric so i won't end up mixing it up so this is the center um, piece you can see that it is on fold you can see it is on fold so we'll go ahead now and put it like this so just go ahead and place it right side facing right side and pin it down then you use the half inches that allowance you took to just stitch it down so i'll go ahead and stitch it down and i'll do the same thing for the other side as well so this is what we have after i was done stitching it down you can see what we have go ahead and iron this so we'll bring out the the back piece and this is the back piece i'll just keep the lining piece for now so this is the back piece and i'll go ahead and also mark out the rough side with my chalk 
so i'll go ahead and mark out the rough side so that i won't end up mixing it up after doing that just go ahead and place it the way it's supposed to be so after you must have arranged it well pin it down like so After pinning it down, remember when we were drafting this, I took 1 inches for stitching allowance. So I'll go ahead and mark that 1 inches that I took. So go ahead and mark your stitching allowance. Yours could be more than mine. So the 1 inches and I'll stitch it down and I'll repeat the same thing for the other side. And this is what we have. You can see, I've gone ahead to stitch this down. And this is my bias. So this is my black bias. I'll just go ahead and mark the midpoint of the center front. Like this. Then I'll just rule really a line. Then I'll place my bias on it like so. And I'll go to my machine and stitch it down on both sides. So I hope you understand. So you go ahead and stitch this down. And I'll repeat the same thing for um this other side as well this other side all the side where i i have um stitch or stitching all the side i stitched i'll just place my bias there and i'll stitch it down and then on this side you can see that i already have one inches so you just mark one inches away from that part away from this part and then you also place a bias there so that one inches, I'll be showing you what to use it for later. So just go ahead and do that and I'll come back and show you. So this is what we have. I also went ahead to iron it. So you can see my bias and you can see the one inches. You can see that. I hope you understand what Aisha did. So this is what we have. So the next thing we'll do now is to bring our boning. So this is the boning I'll be making use of so you just measure your boning like this make sure you have space at the top and at the bottom i don't know if you understand but make sure there is a space at the so you can see i left like half inches at the top and half inches at the bottom so i'll go ahead and cut this out now after cutting it out i'll just go ahead and um use my lighter to bond the the mouth so that it will not um to burn the mouth <laughs> after that go ahead and just put it inside like this so if you look closely you can see i have allowance at the top and at the bottom so that's how you should place yours so i'll go ahead and repeat the same thing measure it leaving half inches on both sides at the top and at the bottom and then you place your boning so i'll just keep on doing that until i am done so i'm boning the mouth just in order to get rid of any sharpness or pointiness in our boning so that that's why i am actually um boning the mouth so just go ahead and do that for all the boning channel that I created. So after doing that, this is what it looks like. You can see that it's not flat again. <laughs> but don't worry, when you iron it to sleep. So the next thing is our lining piece. I did the same thing on my lining piece. So you place it right side facing right side. And you go to your machine after placing it. So let me just pin it down. So you go to your machine and you stitch the top part. Remember, that's why I said you should leave half inches. So you stitch it like so, stitch the top part like that. So I'll go ahead now and just stitch it and come back and show you. So this is what it looks like after I was done stitching it. I'll go ahead now and notch it. So after notching it, go ahead and just turn it over and iron it with your iron. 
So turning this over um can be a little bit tricky but just turn it over. So just take your time and turn it over. After doing that, go ahead and just iron it out. So that's just what I am trying to do now. So this is a very detailed video, guys. I'm showing you guys everything. So this is what we have. So I'll go ahead and iron it. So you can see how flat it is after I was done ironing it. And look how neat it is looking and how beautiful it is already looking. So the next thing we'll do now is this burning casing. You go ahead and measure what you have here. So you can see how I measured mine. So go ahead and do the same thing as well. So what you do now is measure it like so and then you cut it out the way I just did. So after doing that, you just go ahead and open your top like so. Then you place this inside. So just watch how I am placing it. I don't know. I don't know how to explain this part. Just place it inside and then arrange it well then you run a stitch or close to that the boning so you just go ahead and stitch it down and that's just all now this can be really difficult because you have to be arranging it when you are stitching it's not like it will just slip like that so you'll be arranging it as you are stitching so i'll repeat the same thing for this other one you can see so you just stitch it like so down and that's all So just arrange it well and then go ahead and run a stitch there. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So this is what we have. I don't know if you can see the stitch we have here. So you can see how it is now and how beautiful this is looking already. So this is what we have. So the next thing we'll be doing now after doing that is to turn the fabric again like so. And then this time around... Turning this over is, wow, <laughs> it was not easy actually. So you just turn it um, over, just take your time so you won't end up ruining your clothes. So we'll just turn it over like this and we'll stitch the bottom part of this. I don't know if you understand. So you just stitch it down, put that inside and also stitch it down. So that's just what um we'll be doing here so just take your time and this is what we have so i'll go ahead now and bring this out bringing this out again was really another hmm. <laughs> but it was all good just take your time anyway just take your time you can do it so i'll just bring it out carefully So don't rush, just bring it out gently and to come out, it will be nice. So after bringing this out, this is what it looks like. So just go ahead and arrange it. And then after arranging it, so after arranging this now, this is what it looks like. Do I'll iron it. So the next thing you'll do is fold this edge inside, that one inch that I asked you to leave. So you fold it inward like so. So you see what I'm doing? Just fold it in and then you go ahead and iron it flat. So fold it in, then iron it. So you have something like this when you are done. I'll do the same thing for the other side as well. So you go ahead and also press your clothes. Iron it flat. So yeah, go and do that. And this is what we have after I was done. So um, I'll go ahead now and show you guys the... Um, this is it. So this is the... You can see what I mean. Or what I meant. You can see how I ironed it flat. So what we'll do now is... This is uh, a bias a bias i just folded it into two and i stitched it down so i'll just go ahead and measure two inches and i'll cut it out so this two inch um and i'll cut it out 
So I'll be using that as my loop. So that place that I've ironed, I'll just fold it inward like this and I'll pin it down. So just go ahead and do the same thing. Fold it inward and then pin it down. So I'll come to the um the down part of the clothes and I'll repeat the same thing. Fold it in and pin it down. Pin it down. Then after pinning it down. So pin, pinning this down was a bit difficult. But I just had to show you guys what I did here. So go ahead and pin it down. So what we'll do now is to measure um, what we had the distance between here to the other side. And I have four and a half. So I divided four and a half and I just placed the midpoint. And I'll place the other one there as well and pin it down. So after doing that, you just go to your machine and you run a stitch on it. So this is what we have. So I'll go ahead and run a stitch on it twice so that it will stay well so i'll repeat the same thing for the other side after ironing it and this is what we have for the both side so you can see what we have we are basically done with our top you can see how beautiful it is guys so you can see that this is not difficult at all so this is just this is my loop just cut out these pieces from the fabric so guys, if you find this video helpful, please, please consider subscribing. Do not forget to share your, not your notification bell to get notified when I upload a new video. Do not forget to like, share. Do not forget to leave a comment, a suggestion. Tell me if you find this video helpful. So just say one or two things, guys. So this is our top and this is how beautiful it is. So you can see what we have. So guys, let's see you in my next video. Bye.